Titans fans, how's it going? Titan Uprising here. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Please continue to like, share, subscribe. Uh, please comment. Love the comments. Love the feedback, whether it's good or bad. And like I said earlier, please subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And uh, the button, uh, the subscribe button's right there for you to click throughout the video. So uh, if you like it, if you like what you're watching, please hit subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Now today's video, I'm going to dive right into it. This is about Chance Campbell. This is a guy maybe a lot of you guys forgot about because he got hurt last year. He's a sixth round pick for us. Uh, and he showed out in uh, offseason programs and he showed out in preseason as well. He made some highlight plays and uh, hey, our inside linebacker core is not exactly the greatest. Uh, I, I think it has the potential to be, but there's a lot of unproven guys, a lot of hungry guys. Uh, this guy can move up the depth chart. Maybe not be a starter, but I think he can move up. And that's one of the things I'll bring up later in the video is the depth chart. And I will show you where I think he can possibly get to and who he can leapfrog. And I'm also going to bring up his college stats. I'm going to bring up some of the full, um, combine results he had. I'm going to bring up who I think he reminds me of as a former Tennessee Titan that we just did not resign this past offseason that went to another team. And that gives me similar vibes to him. And uh, I'm going to pull up an article by Jim Wyatt because, as you guys know by now, that's one of the only reporters, editors, slash writers that I will uh, share content of because I am just a big, huge Jim Wyatt fan. I think he's one of the only Titans uh, writers that knows what the hell he's talking about. Um, but... I got I to gotta say real quick, Wednesday, this past, which was, I recorded this video on Thursday, yesterday, which was Wednesday, uh, Chance Campo made what reporters are calling one of the plays of the day for the defense, and that was Chance Campo batting down Malik Willis' pass at the line of scrimmage. Now, you might not think that's much, right, because, hey, it's just a batted down pass, but in the game, it means a big deal. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a loss of down right there, right? Guy throws the ball, batted down, next down. It could be a third down to get him off the field, right? Uh, Tennessee's good at batting balls down. We're, we coach it. Uh, Tier Tart, Jeff Simmons, right? Good guys are batting that ball down. Obviously, there's some Tennessee coaches. Um, but the reason why I do think it's one of the highlights of the day is because the defense don't technically win at this point in time. There's no pads, no pass rush. Uh, seven on sevens, right? It's... So the, the, for linebackers uh, to, to get a highlight like that, that's good. I mean, I mean, it shows that the defense, and we know this, our defense is going to be legit this year. It's going to be stout. It's going to be a top five unit. Um, definitely top 10, potentially be top five. And I think we will get be top five. But I'll pull up this article for you guys here on Chance Campo that Jim Wyatt wrote. And he wrote this on June 12th of this year. And the title is A, a Year Later, Linebacker Chance Campo Back in the Mix for the Tennessee Titans. And I'll read it off for you guys here. Uh, Chance Campo was all in after being drafted by the Titans last April. A productive linebacker in college, Campo displayed penny, plenty of good qualities during his first few months on the job in Tennessee. He was showing promise in practices, and, and he was productive in preseason games. Then it all came to a screeching halt. A knee injury derailed his rookie season, and it forced him into a schedule that included a lot of rehabilitation and time on his own. You go through a period of being upset and frustrated with the world about it. Why me? Or what if, Campbell said. But you can't really live in that world. I had to find that silver lining. A year later, Campbell was back in the practice field with a new question attached to him. Remember me. Campbell, who played at Ole Miss and Maryland before being selected in the sixth round of the 2022 NFL Draft, has taken part in all the team's OTAs and minicamp, and he's been getting a lot of work. Campbell is a mix of inside linebackers that includes fresh faces and opportunities, and he's fired up about it. It's been a long time waiting, Campbell said, so I am just excited to be back out there with the guys. Campbell, who started all 13 games at Ole Miss in 2021 and led the team with 109 tackles, got a taste of what offseason work is like in the NFL a year ago. In addition to OTAs and minicamp in 2022, Campbell also worked in joint practices at training camp. And when he played in preseason, Campo started all three preseason contests a year ago. He tallied eight tackles, one tackle for a loss, and a pass defended. The offseason, or sorry, this offseason, the Titans signed inside linebacker Aziz Alshair, Luke Gifford, and Ben Neiman in free agency. And returners Monty Rice, Jack Gibbons, and Otis Reese all are competing inside as well. Campo said it's a hungry goop, and he's doing his part to stand out. 
What's asked of us is to go and try and make a role and help the team in any way we can. And that's why I'm going to try and do, Campbell said. They just ask us to play the best ball we can. And that is what I try to focus on. However I can do that, the best I can do that, that's what I try and do. And while his experience from a year ago is beneficial, Campbell said he's focused on what's ahead, not on the past. In a lot of ways, he's starting over. I am definitely more comfortable. It's not the first time you are seeing a lot of things, so that's huge, Campbell said. Small things from being here in Nashville, knowing what that's like, from I don't have to pull up the GPS up when I come to work, so that part is pretty cool, so there is a comfort spot. But it's also important to not be comfortable. Coach Frabel talks about that all the time. Nothing is made, so you have to work to get better and do what you can uh, to make the team better. Good article, Jim Wyatt, as always. Now I'm going to uh, pull up some stats about him here. In college, this guy, I'm not going to pull him up. I'm just going to read him off really quick. Uh, he had 109 total tackles in his senior year at Ole Miss. 47 solo, two forced fumbles, six sacks. He's 6'2", 232. He ran a 4'5", 40, a 39 and a half inch vertical, and 127 inch broad jump. The guy's athletic, the guy's big, the guy's strong, the guy's fast. Um, everything you'd want in a linebacker. He reminds me, and I hope you guys have been thinking about this, he reminds me of David Long. Now, he got hurt last year, um, and that's not why he reminds me of David Long because of the injuries. Uh, he, he just reminds me of David Long because he was drafted late. Long was drafted in the fifth, I believe, and this guy was in the sixth, sixth round. And now Long made plays now in preseason, then he made plays on special teams. Uh, this guy was making plays last year in preseason. He was going to be a special teams contributor, and he got hurt. I think this year you're going to see this guy pop off on special teams. Then you're going to see him be more of a contributor this year and, you know, depth piece and with a potential to start next year because none of our linebackers are really locked up. Monty Rice, you know, a couple years here. Uh, Aziz, one year. Um, you know, Gibbons, I'm pretty sure, is one year, maybe two. I'm pretty sure he's an undrafted guy. So we don't really have anybody locked up long term at the inside linebacker position. Inside linebacker position can be one. Or if they see this guy on the rise, they can, they can let him go. Remember, we let linebackers go for David Long to come in and start. Uh, so maybe they, they like what they saw from him. you Because know, we didn't really go out there and spend a lot of money at inside linebackers. And we're not really bringing any in right now. So we must like what we got. Um, especially with Aziz coming in. He's got he's a hungry guy. going to prove it. Um, he said, don't be surprised this guy starts moving up on the depth chart. And that's what I'm going to do right now is pull up the depth chart. And by now, you guys know who I like, and that is rlads.com. Huge fan of how they present this depth chart in general. And this was updated yesterday at 4.06 p.m. Eastern time. And we're specifically, I mean, you guys can look at whatever you want on here. I'm going to pull up the whole defense. But we're specifically looking at inside linebacker. And inside linebacker, we have obviously the starters who we think we're going to get. Monty Rice and Aziz Alshair. And then they have the second stringers stringers there at Ben Neiman and Luke Gifford. And then Jack Gibbons and Chance Campbell as the third stringers. Um, and obviously we are talking about Campbell here. And Campbell, you know, I could see getting the second string over someone like Luke. Luke is a special team ace. Uh, Dallas was upset when, they, when we uh, signed him that they didn't retain him. I remember a special teams guy or coach saying, you, you know, you guys got to guys stole a stud from us. So maybe he makes a good deal for himself or a good name for himself, right? It's possible, but Campbell's a guy to keep an eye, an eye out for. Uh, Neiman and Gifford are going to be special teamers. Um, Gibbons, we saw a little bit of him last year. Uh, maybe he can take a step up, but what I saw from him last year, uh, you know, good preseason, good guy in a depth chart, good, uh, good, de uh, good role player. Uh, hopefully he can take a step up, but uh, he didn't show last year to me that he could be a, a starter um, as of yet. I think he'd be a good depth piece. But I could see, uh, like I said, I could see Campbell sneaking in ahead of Neiman and becoming that uh, fourth linebacker because I think Luke is going to have a decent role this year. Um, I could see him being that fourth linebacker. And we go through uh, defensive players here. Uh, we rotate, especially linebackers. Uh, so Campbell can get in there. 
He had six sacks his uh, senior year, like I said, so he can get after the quarterback as well. And we're always showing different fronts, exotic fronts, exotic looks to confuse the quarterbacks. That's Tennessee's specialty, mix, match, mix, mix and match and everything. And I love that part of the defense. I like it when we confuse an offense. Uh, if you guys haven't seen an episode of the quarterback, uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes, Marcus Mariota, and Kirk Cousins are on it. I think it's episode four where Patrick Mahomes brings up uh, – Tennessee's defense. When we played him, he goes, Tennessee's defense is just, man, they're showing you something different all the time. A version of Bill Belichick, he said. And he's like, one of the most underrated best defenses in the NFL. Loved hearing that uh, because that's coming from the best quarterback in the NFL right now. Uh, so don't be surprised if, you know, you see uh, Campo getting a sack, one, uh, one or two sacks this year, uh, Woodson, showing you different looks. Now, I think he's going to make a step up this year. Kind of, you know, like someone like David Long did. He's going to make a name a name for himself. And then the year after, let's just say we don't keep Aziz Oshare. Uh, or Monty Rice, you know, maybe we, you know, he's going to be in the last year of his contract, I believe. Um, or, no, he'll be second to last year in his contract. No, last year, 2021, two, three, four. Next year will be his last year because uh, he's your third-round pick. We won't, won't have an option on him because he wasn't a first-round pick. So Monty Rice's last year will be next year. Uh, unless we re-sign him. So this is a guy that can sneak up the depth chart. Um, reminds me, like I said, of a David Long. Keep an eye out for him. I liked what I saw from him last year in the offseason programs. I liked what I saw from him in the preseason games. Uh, he's making uh, a name for himself already. He's been at all the OTAs, all the practices. Uh, he feels more comfortable. It's not his first year in the offense. Or sorry, the defense. It's not his first offseason program, I should say. Uh, this guy is getting more comfortable. Hopefully he stays healthy like the rest of our team. I think this guy is just going to make, just going to touch, just going to touch the base for where he can, what he can get to this, uh, this off season and this, or sorry, this season coming up. I think he's going to start to, to pop off a little bit. You guys are going to start seeing that name Campbell flying across the screen on defense. And then I think next year is when we're really going to see what Campbell can do because I think he's going to get a legitimate shot next year. But this is the season where we're going to start noticing him. Keep an eye out for him. He's healthy. He's hungry. All these inside linebackers are hungry. I like that. You know, someone like Aziz going into a contract year, keep an eye out for him as well. I think he's going to pop off this year. Inside linebacker group, not a lot of experience there. Not a lot of guys that are well-known names, but they're hungry. They're young. They want that next contract. They want to make a name for themselves. You want to. This is the position group that you'll be able to do it on the Tennessee Titans. Uh, that's my breakdown of Chance Campo for tonight. And let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, do you guys think Campo, like I do, is going to have a big, uh, not I shouldn't say a huge year, but he's going to make a name for himself this year. And you guys are going to start to notice him. Um, or are you guys more excited like a, about a Luke Gifford or um, or Ben Neiman? Or I know a lot of you guys are high in Monty Rice. I haven't seen anything to, to show me that. I thought maybe we would last year with the inside linebacker injuries we had. He did okay, but not what I thought he was going to do. I think he was thrusted in too early. Um, so we'll see what he can do this year because he's projected to be a starter for us. So let me know what you guys think down below, uh, and we'll talk soon, everybody. Tighten up.